Let's talk to Labour's leader, Andrew Little. He's in the Wellington studio with me. Good morning. morning. So your reaction there to what Bill English had to say, what, Labour would stall the economy? Yeah, listen, I think that's embarrassing for Bill English to be saying that sort of thing. It is absolutely and utterly laughable. You look at the, the most, one of the most important infrastructure uh, infrastructure projects going on right now, the City Rail Link in Auckland. Um, the government's, this government, Bill English's government's uh, approach to that was to say, it's not, not needed, not needed for another few years, we'll put it back to 2020. It was because of Auckland and the Auckland Council and the Auckland business community that said, can you guys get real? We need this right now. They, they steamed ahead with it and they have dragged the government kicking and screaming to get that project going. So I, I, I absolutely take no lesson at all from Bill English whose record on this is absolutely appalling. Well, that's just one project of very many going on around the country. And recently, $11 billion was uh, thrown in towards <coughs> capital infrastructure by National. Would you pledge to spend, to match National on infrastructure spend? Yeah, let, let's be uh, clear about the truth about, or the facts about that. So they announced last year they're going to put an extra $9 billion in over four years. They, a few weeks ago they announced oh, it would be $11 billion. We know, they still haven't announced the dollar amount they're contributing to the city railing. So my prediction is that in the budget on Thursday we will hear that they will have to put the $1.7 billion in that they've effectively signed up for for that. We know we've got the Kaikoura uh, State Highway 1 roadway, that's still got to be fixed up. They haven't put a final cost on that yet. So all that stuff's there. That's actually fixing up stuff that was there before. There's nothing new in it. In OK, to be, in, to be clear, though, what yep. would Labour put in the pot for infrastructure? So we have committed to... Um, we backed the City Rail link uh, long ago. We want to see the um, light rail to the airport in Auckland from... Uh, centre city to the airport in Auckland um, and we want an infrastructure plan um, a, a, and a variety of ways of funding it that are going to um, do a number of things in terms of public transport not, not just within cities but between cities as well so we've, we've committed for example to light rail in Christchurch between the city centre and Wallace sure, because that's where the growth of the population is. What's the dollar figure though? Um, the I can't give you the dollar figure on those sorts of things but what we do know Why is not? that uh, well, I don't have that figure in front of me. We've made those commitments. Um, what, I, what I've also been clear about is that we know that there's a huge infrastructure shortfall and we have to be prepared to look at creative ways of financing and funding that. It can't all just Let, be left ju to well, raise payers and taxpayers. Let's so. talk about that in just a moment. But isn't this the difficulty that you can criticise the national figures? You can say, oh, it's not really $11 billion. But you can't tell me how much you would spend. No, what I'm criticising the national government for is claiming that, that somehow they're the party of infrastructure when yep. they, have, they have allowed a huge shortfall to develop and they have no moral claim on saying that they are the party that's doing wonderful things because they're not. They, they, have, le they, have, left, they have held Auckland back from growing and from developing its own prosperity. But you so can't we, tell me how much you would we, spend, Mr well, Little. We've, we've made a commitment, we made a commitment long ago about supporting the City Rail Link. We've made a commitment long ago about uh, supporting light rail from the city to the airport. We've made a commitment long ago about light rail in Christchurch going from the city centre to Rolleston, where the growth of the population is. Mm. We, we know we know there is a massive shortfall in the structure, and, and it's not it's not just the public transport stuff, nor is it just the roading stuff. But it's there's very, a, but it's very hard for stuff. people to weigh the different differences between how much you would spend and how much National would spend on infrastructure when you won't even put a figure on it? Uh, one of the single biggest um, shortfalls in infrastructure we know is housing. So we know we've committed to uh, uh, our Kiwi Build programme, which we think the, the, the upfront capital cost that over 10 years will be recovered anyway, but the upfront capital cost of that is $2 billion. The no. net cost in the long run to the taxpayer is, is nothing, Creative. But, you, but, you, but you've got to put the capital up to, to get the project underway. To Creative ways of funding as well. Does that sound like public-private partnership? Um, uh, you know, at this point, given the shortfall that we've got, and the urgency with which we have to get some of that work underway, uh, I'm saying we've got to keep an open mind to everything, uh, to every possibility. So uh, that's there, a yes. There are some that, well, yeah, because I've you know, long seen and long studied private public partnerships. There are some that have been absolute disasters in other parts of the world. There are some that have been actually quite successful. So we, we want to look at those successful models. Uh, our, our first point. What of about overseas investment? Something like uh, China, which is putting an awful lot of money into infrastructure at the moment. Wouldn't, wouldn't rule Would you anything. Go for that? Out, wouldn't rule anything. Wouldn't out. Rule that our, out. Our, our first port of call is infrastructure bonds. So raising funds from whatever source to finance those particular projects, and the government underwrites it and, and provides a return on uh, on that form of financing. But just so, to clarify that, because I do want to ask you about something else, but you would potentially take money from either the private sector or indeed from something like the Chinese government 
to build infrastructure in New Zealand? Yeah, I think, I, <clears throat> I think I've think i answered the point by saying yeah. that I think the, the urgency is so great now and the shortfall is so great that I wouldn't rule anything out. The conditions have to be right. There has to be something in it for uh, for us as well. It's not just about saying, you know, holus bolus, we're going to so, so, sign off to a private, inve- a private overseas investment and say, you do this. We've got to make sure that we're developing our own internal workforce, our own internal skills, building up our own capability and capacity to do things. But Is that you, a consistent you, you policy that across that Labour, though, when you look at as much as when, local investment. when you look at other policies that you've got the one uh, on your books, you've talked about the Chinese sounding names when it comes to property investment, you want to cut by tens of thousands the number of uh, immigrants coming into this country. Is that consistent? Yeah, well, some of that's just cheap shot stuff. It's actually not, it's not, a, not a real argument. Well, um, well you were the person who said you wanted to, um, you, you said you wanted to cut the number of immigrants by yeah, thousands, and, and, yeah, and you and were the ones did, who put yeah. out the Chinese sounding names. So, yeah. so the, 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 the Chinese sounding names. You put them into the public arena. Yeah, but that's, that's a cheap shot argument. It's not an argument about infrastructure at all. It's a ridiculous argument. But what, what we do know I'm is. I'm just trying to see consistency across Labour policy. T- totally consistent, um, and, and, and slowing down immigration so that we're not overcrowding cities and putting huge pressure on public services that are struggling to cope right now is actually a sensible thing to do. Developing the economy, developing our infrastructure is also the sensible thing to do and and looking to foreign direct investment to do that is not at all inconsistent with an approach that says we're going to manage our country and our economy in a way that's responsible and good for everybody, those who are here, those who are coming here and those who wish to come here. I would just like to talk to you about something else while you're here. The claim this morning that we've been hearing from the candidate for East Coast Bays, mm. uh, Rowan Lord. He told us this morning that there's no future for white middle class men in Labour. Is that right? Uh, no, of course not. Uh, what I have said since pretty much since I've been the leader is that I want a list, and in fact I want a caucus after the election this year that is as reflective and representative of New Zealand as possible. Um, and we had to increase our representation of women, we had to increase our representation of ethnic communities because we pretty much had none, and we've increased our representation of Māori. There are plenty of um, white middle class men or whatever categorisation that you want to make of it uh, in our so, caucus. So what was the main reason that he was so far down the list, number 72 I think? We had, uh, you know, Rowan is just one of the many talented people we had uh, the option of, of trying to find a place for, and we did work very hard to try and find a place for him further up the list. But the Was way he disadvantaged by, by being a man or by being white on that list? Because you are trying to achieve, for example, the gender balance in caucus. When you've got, we had about 80, 80 people uh, applying to get in on the list. That, that excludes, of course, the six Māori MPs who didn't wish to be on the list and were allowed not to be. Um, so we've got nearly 100 people who we are accommodating to find a place for in our caucus after the September election. Not everybody fits. And we had some, look, right across the board, as I say, including Rowan and Lord, really deeply talented people. But we don't have a place for everyone. And so... You didn't uh, he, want him he, in Parliament, though, did you? Because, I mean, he, he's in a seat that he's unlikely to win realistically and at number 72 on the list it would be virtually impossible so for him to un- get in. Not unusual for somebody who steps up for the first time to who wants to you know, both go on the list and stand in a seat that they stand in an you know, arguably unwinnable seat um, and puts themselves up for the list um, but it, it's a first run but Rowan's got plenty of time ahead of him I would I would say to Rowan he's, he is respected and known and uh, and valued and that, uh, that just missing out on the first time is not the end of the road. Most of the people who have come in, in winnable places on our list at this time have, have had a go before so and they've done some hard yards and they've made their contribution and so there's plenty of scope for Rowan in 2020. That's not quite true for, for some people that I have to say spring to mind pretty much immediately. It is their first run and they're pretty high up the list. Having said that, are you saying that he, if he continues to pursue a political career, he would be further up the list another time? Uh, having having had one go at it, and if if he had continued his run at East Coast Bays, that's the stuff that says to the party, the committee, the list committee that puts it together to say, yep, this guy's serious. He's done this. He's done the hard yards. He's putting a bit of effort here, and uh, and that that sort of uh, you know ups his chips for next time. So you know, and that that is the way it pretty much works uh, for a lot of people. They they show and demonstrate a commitment and a dedication, and yep, it don't, doesn't all go your way the first time. But that sets you up your second time to have a go. You've got the talent, you've got the skills, and Rowan clearly does. And he would have set himself up well for 2020. Appreciate your time this morning. That's the Labour leader, Andrew Little, in the Wellington studio. 13 minutes to eight.